Hi everybody and thanks for joining me again. I have what I hope to be as a really quick video today. Specifically, I want to talk about how to export PDF files generally out of Illustrator, but really out of any uh, Adobe product that will allow you to export PDF documents. I've had a lot of questions about what my settings are, how I make sure that certain things happen. So I just want to, I just want to plow through it really quickly with you. So here we have a piece of artwork that I've created really fast. Um, so what I'm going to do is just go ahead and export this as PDF. So if I go to File, Save As, I get PDF here as my option. Yeah, I've already saved it. All right, so I have some options available to me. And so I'm just going to go through these settings kind of rapid fire, but I'm going to go through all of these uh, pretty quickly. First of all, the standard here, if you don't need to adhere to a standard, I would recommend that you don't select these because this will actually have kind of major effects on everything else that happens here. So unless you're like working with a printer that requires PDF, you know, X1A or something like that, I generally don't do this. Uh, do also keep in mind that if you're working in RGB, based on my last video, that some of these standards will actually convert your file over to CMYK. Uh, I do always make sure that I'm using the most recent version of Acrobat. I work in, a, in, a, in an exclusively Acrobat format, right? So I don't save like AI files in Illustrator and then export as PDF. I just save everything as PDF with my Acrobat in there. My, I can embed my Acrobat and that's actually this checkbox right here that we're going to get to. Um, but so I want to make sure that I'm using all of the functionality that's, that's built in. So I always choose the most recent. And yeah, right here, preserve Illustrator editing capabilities. This will drastically increase your file size in some cases, but this actually saves your AI, your, your Illustrator file right inside Acrobat, your, your Acrobat document and in some reserved space that you don't get to see if you're just opening it in an Acrobat viewer or, you know, reader or whatever. Um, embed page thumbnails. I generally do this. You can turn those on and off. If I have a multi-page document, it's it's a lot easier to just be able to see the uh, the thumbnails. For what I do, neither of these really make much sense. Um, optimize for fast web view. I don't do web view stuff. Um, view PDF after saving. Rarely do I need to open a PDF immediately after saving it. Uh, if you're nervous about it, if you want to make sure everything's good, yeah, you can turn that on. And then the last one here is create Acrobat layers from top level layers. So if I have nested layers, you know, layer upon layer upon layer inside of other layers, it's only those top level ones that will actually get saved. But it will actually allow you to save those, those layers. It's nice because like when I'm working with white, I put white on its own layer. And as long as I have this checked, I can turn that off. And if I'm looking at my my artwork which has color plus white in acrobat reader i can turn my white on and off and see where the white is actually showing up under compression right now i don't have anything set up but this i can actually automatically down sample my images if i choose to and i have a couple of options here i cannot down sample which is how i'm set up right now uh, that means that if I have, you know, a 600 pixel per inch piece of art and I've reduced it inside to fit in this artboard, you know, I've shrunk it down that maybe I'm at 800, a thousand pixels per inch. It's going to save all thousand pixels per inch of image data. If I want to do that, I can just choose don't downsample. But if I want to squinch this down a little bit, very technical term, uh, and make my file smaller, I can actually choose, typically I'm going to do bicubic downsampling. That gives me the, the smoothest output. Uh, and then I can choose what my resolution is. And if you, if you look at my video on resolution, you can get an idea of where you need to be. But typically, I'm not going to go above 150 or maybe 200 pixels per inch um, uh, unless there's some very clear needs, like I'm designing at scale. Um, you know, I'm, I'm designing smaller. Uh, but I can I can turn that on if I want. Once I do that, it also gives me the option of 
it'll only downsample if I have, in this case, an image that's above 225 pixels per inch. It takes time to do the downsampling. So if I have something that ends up at 200, I'm not really saving much by downsampling it to 150, but I'm losing time. So that's what this is all about. And then I get the option of what my compression method is. I'll tell you right now, I just, I always choose uh, zip. Um, I think it gives me really good compression. It's not throwing away. If I choose one of the, one of the JPEGs, right, then it's actually throwing away image data, not just resolution, but actual image data. Zip doesn't do that. Um, I'll keep it for none for now. And I have my option for anything that's color raster. I have anything that is grayscale raster and then monochrome, right? Really bitmap image. So just black or white. Um, I, I do have that option. Make sure if you turn this on that you give yourself sufficient resolution because now you're no longer, you know, let's say I need a hundred pixels per inch for, for something that I'm working on. I'm going to need more than a hundred pixels per inch probably when I'm working with monochrome. Usually you're, you're going to double that at the very least. Marks and bleeds. If I want to add printer's marks, this will actually hang. It'll, it'll make my PDF a little larger dimensionally. Uh, but I can add trim marks, registration marks, color bars, which are just, you know, cyan, magenta, yellow, black squares. Uh, and then page information, right? Which will actually give me, you know, this is what the file name is and things like that. Um, so I can, I can choose to turn that on my workflow. I never turn that on, but if you, if you need printer's marks, there they are. Um, I can set my document up to automatically set a bleed of a certain size. Uh, right now I'm set to pixels, so it's a little bit crazy, but if you didn't know this, I can also just type in, um, inch and it'll automatically do the math for me. Uh, it's quite nice. Um, but I can set that bleed up if I want, or I can just use my document bleed settings. I, I'm very diligent about making sure when I create a document, if it needs bleed, that I have added bleed in the actual artboard. So I always just check that. But here's the important one, the super important one here, and that's output. Okay, this is how we are set up out of the box. All right, no conversion but don't include profiles. So what the color conversion will do is it'll allow me to actually convert my color on the fly. Uh, and we're not just talking RGB to CMYK. We could even be talking sRGB to Adobe RGB or something like that. Uh, so actually changing color information if I do convert to, des to destination. But I'm going to do no conversion. I want no color conversion happening here. But I want to include all profiles. Every single piece of artwork in here is going to get a little tag associated with it that says this piece of this artwork right here is Adobe RGB. And well, you know, in this particular artwork, so is all of it. Um, but you know, if I if I embed a, a an if I embed another PDF, because I can place a PDF on the on this page and it happens to be CMYK, I want to include that information. Right? Uh, so that is really the key to making sure that your color workflow works properly is to make sure that include all profiles is, is turned on there. Uh, under advanced, you do have the option of, of what's called subsetting fonts. So automatically it'll embed your font. Um, what happens is though, if all I'm doing is just putting the, the, the word title, you know, across the top of my screen in a particular font, I'm only using four different characters. So in this case, it will only include those four characters. It makes it much harder to edit if you don't have, if you're working on another computer that doesn't have that, that font, uh, but it makes that document much, much smaller in size. Security, uh, here's where I can, you know, do all of my security things, right? So I can require a password to open the document, to, uh, to edit all of these things. If, you're, if your next step is to send this to a RIP, make sure that none of those are turned on. Uh, it's bad news if you do.
And there you go. At this point, I can save PDF, but I want to show you one other thing first, and that is this guy right here. And this, if I click on this, I am going to do a demo preset for YouTube video. All right. I want to show you this because now anytime I want to choose it, it's there. I don't have to go through all of my settings. And it gets even better than that. If I switch really quickly to InDesign, if I go here to Adobe PDF Presets, Demo preset for YouTube video. So this is what I save when I save a PDF preset. It is universal for all of my Adobe products. I have access to those. So at that point, I can choose demo preset for YouTube video, hit, hit save, and I'm done, right? I'm ready to go. So I think that's a really, really nice feature. The fact that, that I, I only have to save it once, and if I use any Adobe programs, once I save it, it's in that program on that computer. So there you have it. Quick and dirty. I tried to make this a nice short video. Uh, these are my settings. I'm not guaranteeing that if you use these settings, you're going to have as, as much success as I do, but I will guarantee that you might find a lot fewer failures. Uh, so thanks again for joining me and I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.